Hey gamers, I am John, host of Video Games in the World, and hello to you too, Star Wars fans. So, today's review is Star Wars Squadrons. Well, what can I say about this game? It's not as great as Jedi Fallen Order, but it's still pretty good. The, the cool thing about it is that you can play it with or without the PS4 VR headset, at least. Now, this game takes place a year after the return of the Jedi, and the cool thing about it is that is that in the story you can play as a pilot for Titan Squadron of the Empire and at times as a pilot for Vanguard Squadron of the Rebel Alliance. So with all that said and done, let's go! Story for this game. In the beginning of the game, an Imperial captain named Lyndon Jays has witnessed the destruction of Alderaan, destroyed by the Empire as a warning to those who oppose it. Jays then defects to the Rebel Alliance. Then after the Battle of Endor, the Rebel Alliance continues fighting for freedom despite the deaths of Darth Vader and Darth Sidious. The Rebels start a project called no Project Starhawk in order to defeat the Empire for good. Meanwhile, Captain Teresa Carrill, who was mentored by Javes, is ready to take the fight to the Rebels and destroy Project Starhawk with a new squadron she commands called Titan Squadron. One of its pilots flew alongside her when Jace led the Helix Squadron before his betrayal. Star Wars Squadron is a playable in VR entirely. The game takes place entirely during a first-person perspective. The game features a single-player campaign and various multiplayer modes. The campaign alternates between the perspective of the New Republic and Imperial pilots. Players can pilot eight different ships, from the New Republic, players can pilot the X-Wing, the A-Wing, the Y-Wing, and the U-Wing. And the ships players can fly from the Empire are the classic TIE Fighters, TIE Interceptor, TIE Bombers, and the TIE Reapers. X-Wings and TIE Fighters are balanced in firepower and defense. A-Wings and TIE Interceptors have superior speed and are useful against fighters. The U-Wing and TIE Reaper are support ships which are heavily armored and can support other craft. Last but not least, the Y-Wings and TIE Bombers are slower with better firepower and armor and are best for taking down enemy capital ships. Players can also play in multiplayer modes such as Dogfight, where 10 players can play, and fleet battles in which two teams of 5 players destroy each other's capital ships. In the story mode, during the prologue, you learn about how Lyndon Javes betrays the Empire to join the Rebel Alliance after witnessing their cruelty in the destruction of Alderaan. Meanwhile, his former protege, Teresa Carrill, would later be promoted and vows to maintain the Empire's dominance over the galaxy. But the story is also told from the perspective of two pilots from both the Empire and the Rebel Alliance. The Rebel Alliance fights for a free galaxy from the tyranny of the Empire, which seeks to maintain their oppressive and totalitarian control over it. Initially conceived and pitched by James Clement and Patrick Lalonde to Motive Studios' leadership, they were soon joined by Stephen Masters to help develop the presentation for what will become Star Wars Squadrons. As these three developers were still finalizing the single-player campaign for Star Wars Battlefront 2, a small group led by Ian Fraser laid the groundwork to build the production team. This game was revealed with the release of a trailer on June 15 this year, and then on October 2nd it was released for the PS4, Windows, and Xbox One. There will be no PS5 and Xbox Series X versions for this game, but they can still be playable through backwards compatibility. Bad aspect for this game. My rantings about this game is that sometimes the controls felt a bit too clunky. Also, I'm not fond of VR headsets since I get pretty dizzy with those. Both pilots deserve to have a bit of a story about themselves being told, too. And another thing is that the targeting was not as good. I wasn't too fond of support ships like the U-Wing and the TIE Reaper, either. Although the TIE Reaper had good blasters, I didn't like how the U-Wing's blasters were only ion cannons. Now, I know that the game is entirely first-person because of VR, but they could have at least let us switch to third-person 
in a way. And now for the good aspect. I love the voice acting and hearing familiar voices such as Phil Morris, Vanessa Marshall, James Arnold Taylor, Bex Taylor Claus from the Arrowverse, Erica Luttrell, and so on. I like the graphics of the game and they were captured the feeling of Star Wars. What I felt from this game was Rogue Squadron vibes, not just in terms of gameplay but also regarding Lyndon Javes betraying the Empire to join the rebels like Kriegs Maydeen, Case and Moore of the Legends Canon in Rogue Squadron, and Ivan Versio in Battlefront 2. I also like that you could customize your ship with different blasters, missiles, shields, thrusters, and so on. What was also really interesting is that this game doesn't have Vader, Luke, Han, or Leia in it. That's what I like about this different take from the Star Wars that we know. Listening to familiar themes made it pretty neat, too. And for yet another game that bridges the gap between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, this was pretty cool. And finally, to wrap this up, I gotta say that this game has its good moments and bad moments as well. Not as good as Jedi Fallen Order was in many ways, but it's still a pretty solid Star Wars game by EA Games. <sighs> Too bad Amy Hennig's project will never come to light. It would have been awesome. My final score for Star Wars Squadrons is an 8.2 out of 10. Thanks for watching everyone. So don't forget to comment, like, share, and hit that subscribe button. I am John, host of Video Games in the World. May the Force be with you gamers. Peace.